Okay, in this problem we're going to work with an indexed family of sets. So AI is just an indexed family of sets and all the indices, the little i, come from the set capital I. And also B is another set. And we are going to show the following. We're going to show that B differenced with the union of all AIs is equal to the intersection over all indices I of B difference AI. So we're going to show that these two sets are equal. So in general, when we work with showing set equality, we show two things. We show first that one set is a subset of the other. So we would show that B diff the union is a subset of the intersection. And then we would show the second part, which would be that the other set is a subset of the first one. So the intersection is a subset of B diff the union. So if we can establish one and establish two, that means that these sets are equal because every element of the first set is in the second and every element of the second set is in the first. So these are the same sets. So this is the strategy for this problem that we're going to use. We're going to show these one at a time. So let's go ahead and do step one. Let's try to establish that when B, diff union, is a subset of the intersection. So the way we usually do this is we let an arbitrary element be in this first set, and we show that it is in the second set. So we'll start with x in b diff the union, and then we're going to perform manipulations until we've concluded that x is actually in the intersection. And that will mean that these are subsets, that the first set is a subset of the other. So let's go ahead and do that. So let x be an element of b diff the union. So what is this equivalent to? Let's start manipulating. So this means that x is in b, and x is not in the second set. So that is the definition of a difference. So this is equivalent to the statement x is in b, and x is not in this second set, where the second set is the union of all the sets ai over the indices i and capital I. Okay, so we've just replaced our original statement with a logically equivalent statement. And let's just keep going. What is this equivalent to? Well, we have x is an element of b and, and we can simplify this part a little bit. If x is not in the set, we can also write this as not x in the set. So all we've done is introduce a not, and instead of saying that x is not in the set, we've said that it is an element of the set, but then we knotted it. Okay, so that's just a logically equivalent statement. This statement now is equivalent to x is in b and not. What does it mean for x to be an element of the union of this set? Well, that means that there exists some i in the index set capital I such that x is in a i. So this just makes sense. If x is in this union, that means it has to be in at least one of the a i. So that means there has to exist a little i such that x is in a i. So all we've done is replaced x being in the union with the fact that there has to be at least one element in the union that x is in, and we're calling this little i. Well, this is logically equivalent to x is in b, and so what have we done here? All we've done is used our quantifier negation law. We have not there exists, well that turns into for all i, and then we negate the expression. So the expression before was x in ai, now it's x not in ai. So this is just our quantifier negation law that we replaced. The not there exists with a for all and then not of the logical expression. So x is in b and for all i and i, x is not in ai. Okay. What are we doing here? All we're doing here is just doing some different notation x not in b is logically equivalent to for all i and i x, or I'm sorry, x in b is logically equivalent to for all i and i x is in b. b is not a function of i, of i at all, so I can throw for all i and i in front of it, and it doesn't change it because b is not a function of i. So that hasn't changed anything. And then the rest of our logical expression remains unchanged. This is equivalent to, now I can kind of facially factor out the for all i of i notation. For all i of in i, x is in b and x is not in ai. So this is just a notation thing, just switching around a little bit. And we're almost there. So this is equivalent to, let's look at the inside part, x is in b and x is not in ai. Well that is just the definition of a difference. If x is in b and x is not in ai, that means x is in b diff ai. 
So we now have uh, reduced our original expression x in b diff union of ai to the logical equivalent for all i in i, x is in b and not in ai, the diff there. This is equivalent to x is in the intersection. If x is in every element b diff ai, that means it's in the intersection of all these things. So this is logically equivalent to x is in the intersection over all i in capital I of b diff ai. And this is what we wanted to show. We started with an arbitrary element of the first set, b diff the union, and we ended up showing that x is an element of the second set, the intersection of b diff ai. So we have accomplished step one. So how would I go about doing step two? Well, for step two, what do I do? I'm going to go the other way. I need to start with let x be an element of this set intersection, and I need to show that it's also an element of the first set, b diff the union. Well, I can really just repeat these steps backwards. I can just go from here to here, here to here to here to here. I can just walk backwards through this set of logical equivalences to get back to where I started. So the second part is actually really easy, and that's easy to show. So we've shown that the first set is a subset of the second, and the second set is a subset of the first, so these sets are equal.